believe in, in kind of a, a collaborative spirit in our business. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't say one franchisee is not allowed to talk to another or anything like that. We have a main group Facebook forum where every franchisee is in. So there's so much sharing of information and everything else. Um, but all we ever see is people on fan trips and education yeah. trips. So <laughs> me and Steve, you know, I'm, I'm here in, I'm home based in Liverpool. I have an office in my garden and Steve works at the, the corporate office with all the staff. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting here and all, all pops up as, you know, pictures of pina coladas in St. Lucia or Mauritius or sandals or wherever they go. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's good on them. You know, there's, there's, as you know, there's, there's different things. You can, you can earn those trips by, by productivity. You can win them. Mm-hmm. Um, but we get them gifted to us as a company again because of our growth figures and everything. So we'll run little competitions and incentives and what have you. Um, People are on them all the time, believe me. Checking it out before you check in on the John Gwynn Travel Show on UKHealthRadio.com. Still to come, how to make the most of the internet when it comes to researching and booking flights. At the moment, I'm talking about how to become a travel agent for your new career move. Perhaps you fancy doing it after being on holiday this August, July, August, and you want to do it for a living because you enjoyed planning your own trip. There are drawbacks, which we're going to go on to in a second, but in the last section I said fam trips, but I didn't explain what a fam trip is, which is very bad of me. It's a familiarisation trip, so tour companies may take travel agents who hit certain targets away to have a look a chain of hotels. I've never went on a tour operator's one, but I went on a, a tourist board one. So the Cayman Islands tourist board took me to the Cayman Islands, obviously. And it sounds great, but it is actually a lot of hard work during the day because you get bussed around the island to see all the different hotels, so you get a chance to see what they are. So when you come to recommending hotels, you have some first-hand experience. And I did one for the British Virgin Islands, which was different to the others. Because it was just me, I didn't have to go around on a bus all day with other travel agents, I could take my wife along with me too, and all I had to do was spend half an hour with a representative of the British Virgin Islands Tourist Board, and I was then over there for five days. So that's what a familiarisation trip is, and also being a travel agent you can get heavily discounted trips to hotels, because they realise that if you've experienced the hotel, you're more likely to be able to sell the hotel to... uh, to your customers because you know what it's all about there was one particular train i used to make a, a lot of use of the discounted trip to their chain but not once did i send one of my customers there because basically the hotel was good for the price i paid but if i was paying the price that my, one of my customers had to pay i would have been very unhappy so as well as finding places to recommend to your customers these fam trips also help you to make sure you don't recommend the wrong place to your customers. So that's what a fam trip is. So I said about the bad part, and the bad part is mistakes. Mistakes can be extremely expensive to put right. I made an expensive one, £750, and all I did was I put the surname and first name the wrong way round, and the airline would not budge to change the names to swap them around i had to cancel the tickets and buy new ones at my own expense so that's the next bit we've done the fun bit but what happens if you make an expensive error how does the travel franchise help you out then so the reality is it's the age you know it's the, the franchise is their business mm-hmm. so if they make a mistake they are responsible for that mistake now the beauty of our business is because we do all of the admin every booking is checked three times mm-hmm so we do catch a lot of those kind of mistakes that happen. So there's not many, um, but we're not there as, as a responsibility. So if we don't catch it, there is still the responsibility of the franchisee um, rather than us because we can't be paying out 70% commission plus paying the mentor plus the buying group. So we only mm-hmm. get a small percentage of the commission. We can't be then the, the insurance policy for everybody as well. Um, but it, it doesn't happen a lot, John, believe me. It's, you know, today's day, day and age with, with all of the systems and the cross-checks and everything else. Um, it, it doesn't happen that often. And even when it does, 
we do, even though our, our company line, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, <laughs> but our company line is, you know, it's the agent's responsibility. We end up paying it most of the time mm-hmm. or, or, or doing half and half with them or something. But, um, but the reality is, yeah, it, it is their responsibility. You would have called my big one. I put the surname and first name the wrong way around on the flight ticket. Yeah, so... <laughs> well, yeah, you, would have, you would have found that. Well, that's the beauty, you know, because obviously you're... If, if you have to do your own bookings and ticketing and admin and everything, then then it's all about focus. And mm. sometimes you, you're just in a rush and you just miss these things where, you know, we have this saying in our business, it's, it's funny how, you know, you never have the time to do it properly, but you've always got the time to do it. You've always got the time to do it again when you've got to fix it. Yeah. So just, you know, do it right first time, basically. Um, and that, as I said, that's why we have this process in place. And, you know, we, with our buying group, one of the things when, when we went and met with them, it's like we are, we barely ever kind of get in touch with them because there's never any problems. You know, we are the opposite of the squeaky wheel. You know, we, they, they just, we, we, they just don't hear from us, you know, because there's never, there's never issues. We never have to, you know, ask them for stuff or anything. We're completely self-sufficient, which is why we were kind of, you know, invited in to, to go and meet with them. So if somebody's interested after hearing our conversation about it, is there any way they can experience what you do support-wise and how people get on before actually signing up? No, it's difficult to kind of to, to, to do that really, John. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens is, this, this is a, a real compliment as well, I believe. I'm the only person in our business who deals with recruitment. And I don't make outbound phone calls. Mm -hmm. So when someone, you know, makes an inquiry, the last thing they're going to do is get badgered by me. Um, you know, rang every night and pestered and what have you. We have a process where we have a 45 minute first look video, which Mm -hmm. explains the concept of the business. If people like that, my home phone number's at the end of the video, they give me a call. Literally, all I'm doing is checking affordability with them because there's no point in sharing all the rest of information if they can't afford to join. Mm-hmm. I then share with them the URL for the second video, which is a 30-minute video, which is the detail now, how it actually works. You know, We have things like a money-back challenge, whereas if they do a set amount of sales in their first year, we give them 100% of their franchise feedback. So... The franchise cost is free, you know, it costs mm-hmm. nothing. Um, so that's explained properly. We have an affiliate program called Partners in Travel, where the biggest thing when people are joining us, John, everyone who's, who's genuinely open and looking for a, for a travel business, they love ours. You know, they love the whole presentation and the whole feel of everything. So their two concerns are, you know, are you going to be there when I pay? You know, are you just trying to flog me a franchise or are you going to be my business partner? So that gets addressed very quickly and easily with our millionaire's retreat and all of the post kind of joining things that we do. And then the second question is, can I find the customers? Will I be able to find enough customers? And so our affiliate program where they partner with companies or organizations or charities or maybe even organizations like yourself where you have a, you know, a, a listener base, your connections, our franchisee becomes their official travel agent. That company or organization or school or charity gets a website, a branded website, and then promote our franchisee to their fan base or database or customers, wherever it be, and we pay them a commission, a percentage of the commission for doing that. So... Again, that's the, the biggest thing that makes people join our business. It's, it's completely unique. As I said at the beginning, we wanted to be you know, innovative and unique. And we've got companies now that have joined us like Sainsbury's and um, London University, the Royal British Legion, Marie Curry, Prostrate Cancer, household names um, that have aligned with us who then promote our services to their either customer base or or in some cases, it's their staff, Sainsbury's. Someone joined us in April, mm-hmm. and in May signed up Sainsbury's. They've got 165,000 staff in the UK. He's now their official travel agent, 
Sainsbury's have just created their own internal video to promote it. And two Fridays ago, it went live in every staff room in Britain. Okay, so how can we find out more about uh, joining your franchise? Everything is online, as I said. Everyone just needs to go to our website, which is www.thetravelfranchise.com. And if they click at the top where it says start here, Mm -hmm. just pop their email in and it will play them that first 45-minute video, John. So as I was saying before, it's a 45-minute video, then a 30-minute one, then what I call like a little due diligence website, like a research website. And how we take this as a compliment is 90% of our 300 franchisees have joined this way without ever meeting us. Mm -hmm. Um, So they just speak with me on the phone, watch those three pieces of information, so to part with ten or fifteen thousand pounds or whatever the, the, the price might be, um, it's a great compliment, I think, without having physically met with somebody. This year we've started to do some kind of like discovery type days, you know, presentations around the country. They've gone down a tree, you know, we've had I think about thirty six percent sign up rate from people who join, which is oh sorry, people who attend. Mm-hmm which is phenomenal, you know, it's not like a little £200 business, you know, it's a big investment, Yeah. and yet over a third of the room are joining on the day, or, you know, directly as a result of coming to meet us and see it properly, we take some of our existing franchisees so they can speak with them as well, so, but yeah, the process is really simple, 45 minute video, if you like it, give me a shout here in my home office, you know, we get to know each other a tiny bit, I'll share more information, and we just chat it through, and we have a training every, um, we have two trainings a, a month now. It used to be one, but we're growing so quick, it's two. And those trainings fill out fast. So I don't have to recruit people or convince or persuade. The trainings just fill, John. Mm-hmm. So my attitude is, look, you know, I, I, I want you to be kind of begging me to join rarely. So I'm not going to ring you. I'm not going to pest you. I'm not even going to try and convince or persuade. I'm here just to give you the information so you make a, a really informed decision. Um, if you like what you see, and most people do, then then great, and we become partners. Okay, great. You've shared an awful lot of information, Paul. I'm sure plenty of people will be interested, and I wish you success uh, growing the business. Yeah, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me today, John. The details will be put up facebook.com slash John Green Travel Show. I'm also going to put web addresses for some Travel Trade magazines, Travel Weekly, Travel Trade Gazette and Travel Bulletin. Travel Bulletin is the magazine I write for. Just so you can have a feel about how people feel about the industry and what sort of news and what's affecting people who are running travel businesses. And you will see lots of pictures of people having a great time because the travel industry really is a good industry to be in. And if you look at these magazines, keep an eye and what's going on, perhaps you'll take the plunge and uh, get yourself a franchise and start your own travel business. If you do, do let me know at the Facebook page, uh, John Green John Gwyn Travel Show, to let us know how you're getting on, and uh, maybe we can do some shout-outs for your new business as well. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwyn on UKHealthRadio.com. Last week, when I did part one of uh, How to Use the Internet to Research and Plan Flights, I did say I was going to talk about frequent flyer clubs, and I never did because I ran out of time. Well, basically, these were invented to keep passengers loyal to a particular airline, and the more you travel, the more points you can earn. Fairly obvious. These points are normally exchangeable for free flights. However, taxes and other fees will still have to be paid. No such thing as a free lunch. Short haul flights are included, but some clubs have a minimum distance to earn points, so check the small print carefully. The airline will probably have a, be a member of a group of airlines, such as I mentioned earlier, One World Sky Team and Star Alliance, which means that you can earn points with different airlines as long as they're a member of the same group. And airlines also have partner schemes where you can earn points if you use a particular credit card or a hire car company or a hotel or whatever. It may work out cheaper to sign up for that airline credit card instead of flying to get the points you need to get to a certain level. If you regularly fly a certain route, check out the clubs offered by each airline that flies that route. Uh, Some are more generous than others for giving points and exchanging them. For example, some airlines may have the same rate even if you use a heavily discounted ticket, 
whereas BA will reduce the reward points available if you buy an extremely cheap ticket for that route. And this is common amongst most airlines where a different fare class 